Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Physics Engine in Java series. In the last episode, what we did was we covered ray casting with rotated boxes. In this episode, we're going to be doing circle versus shape intersection detection. So checking whether a circle is intersecting with another circle, a circle is intersecting with a box or a rotated box. Okay. I'm also going to mention that starting this week, I am going to be releasing one physics episode and one game engine episode every week. So until the foreseeable future, we will be having one physics engine episode and one game engine episode every week. All right, now let's get started and see how circle versus circle intersection detection works. Okay guys, so first up we have circle versus circle intersection detection. And this one is actually pretty easy. It's very similar to what we've been doing in the past. Um, Basically, the first step is to just draw a vector between the two circle centers. Then what we do is we pick up the first radius and we pick up the second radius. Uh, we add them together, which gives us the total length of both radii combined. So if we were to draw this radius, it would go all the way to here. And this radius would be that long. Then we check and see if this vector's length squared. So we'll call this vector V. If the length of V squared is less than or equal to radius one plus radius two squared then we have an intersection and we can easily verify this visually uh, if we draw a vector from here to here and then we just look at the length of this radius and the length of this radius you can see that they're not intersecting and if we add those radii together then we know that it is not uh, the length of those radii summed are less than the length of this vector. And the reason we square it too, once again, is because if you actually take the magnitude of a vector, you're taking a square root and square roots are expensive. So we avoid that simply by squaring the magnitude and then squaring the right hand side too, which re retains the equality. Okay, so that's it for circle versus circle collision detection. You simply check and see if the length squared is less than this length squared. So let's code this real quick and then we will take a look at circle versus box. I'm back in our project inside our intersection detector right below the raycast we just did last episode. So I'm just going to go into here and we're going to create a new function and I'm actually going to copy something real quick. So we're going to have the circle versus primitive tests here. First of all, let's do this uh, simple thing that will help us in the future. We'll say circle and line and we already have this function done. It's just called line and circle, but it's nice to have it both ways just so that you don't have to worry about passing parameters in a certain order. So this is just going to be an overloaded function. We're just going to return line and circle. And we'll pass in the line and the circle. So we'll just forward the data to the next function. This way we can call circle and line or line and circle and it works the same. Next, we'll do public static boolean circle and circle. So we'll take in circle C1 and circle C2. And we'll do exactly what we said. First, we'll get the vector between the center. So we'll say line between, actually, vector between centers equals, we're going to say C1 dot, actually new vector 2f, C1 dot get center dot sub C2 dot get center. And then we'll say float radii sum equals C1 dot get radius plus C2 dot get radius. And then we'll just return line between center or back between centers dot length squared is less than or equal to radii sum times radii sum. And that should work. So this one is actually really easy compared to all of the stuff we've done up here. You would think, oh, shape versus shape. This is gonna be really hard, but it's actually pretty simple until you get to boxes. Circle and box, not too bad. But once we get to box versus box and stuff it's going to get kind of bad. <laughs> but yeah, this is it for circle versus circle. Let's check out a box versus a circle. You can see that I have a couple different situations drawn here. I have a axis aligned box and then a rotated box. And the reason I have them both here is because once we have this one solved, you can see that this is literally the same problem, just rotated, which I'll demonstrate visually via post editing once we finish solving this one. Okay. So how do we tell if this circle is intersecting with this box? Well, we can use the same trick that we just used. It would be nice if we could find the closest point to the center of the circle on the box, which looks like it would be right here because 
we know straight line is the shortest path. So this corner would technically be the closest to the center of the circle. How do we find that corner? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We can just say um, we have the minimum of the box and the maximum of the box, which is at some x0, y0, and the max is at some x1, y1. And we have the center of the circle, which is at some c1 uh, or cx and cy. So center x, center y. And then all we do is we say, okay, the closest point, so closest equals the circle center initially. So we'll initialize it to the circle center. Then we'll just check and see. We'll say, okay, is the circle center x less than the minimum x? Well, no, they're kind of lined up. Is it greater than the maximum x? No. Okay, so we'll leave that the same. What about the y? Is the circle's y less than the minimum y? No, it's greater. Is it greater than the maximum y? Yes, it's greater than the maximum y. Okay, so instead of it being the center y, we'll change it to the max y. And what that does is it gives us this x, right? x0. And then we end up with center y, which gives us this point right here. So more formally, if we just say the center or the closest point is equal to the center x and then we just say if cx is less than min x then it's equal to min x and if cx is greater than max x then it's equal to max x okay so that's it discussed a little bit for more formally i guess and for rotated boxes this is actually the same exact problem so i'm gonna do some fancy video editing right now so you can see how when we rotate this we're literally looking at the same exact thing that we just had here except what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat uh, this lower corner as zero zero so we're gonna call this zero zero that way maximum is literally just the maximum coordinate and then what we can do is we can just rotate we'll, we'll create a vector so create a vector from here to the center of the box. So from the center of the circle to the center of the box. And then we can literally just rotate this around zero, zero. Now it's gonna be pointed in an axis aligned manner. And so once we have that, what we can do is we can literally just treat max, uh, whatever max was, say it was like 10, uh, 20, no, 10, eight. <laughs> so say max was something like 10, eight, what ends up happening is now we can literally just use this vector as the circle's center, right? Because what we can do is once we rotate all of this over, it's gonna be rotated. We can just add the box's half size, which would be this vector right here, right? That's the half size, plus this vector, and we'll get the appropriate coordinates. And then we just treat it the same as this problem. We literally will just copy and paste some code, and then we just treat the min as zero, and the max as whatever the circle, or the box's maximum is, or its size, I guess you could say. So yeah, that's how we'll do the rotated boxes. It'll make a little bit more sense once you see it in code, but let's code these real quick. Back inside of our code, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new public static Boolean circle and AABB. So this will be circle versus an AABB, which we'll just call a box. So this is the access align version, the first problem we were looking at. So first we'll say vector 2f min equals box I get min, vector, 2f max equals box dot get max. So we have the min and we have the max. And we'll say vector 2f closest point to circle. We initialize this to the circle center. Remember, so we'll say new vector 2f uh, c1 or circle dot get center. And I'm going to change this parameter to circle since that is a little more descriptive. Then we'll say if closest point to circle dot x is less than min dot x, closest point to circle dot x equals min dot x else if closest point to circle dot x is greater than max dot x closest point to circle dot x equals max dot x and then we can copy and paste this for the y's we just do the same thing so this will sort of clamp it to the box is what we're doing here we're clamping it to the box if we need to well not if we need to we are clamping it to the box and it's clamping it to the closest piece of the box to the center of the circle which is why we named it closest point to circle so once we have the closest point to circle actually calculated, we'll say vector 2f circle to box. So this will be the line from the circle center to that point that we just created. And we'll say this is the new vector 2f circle dot get center dot sub closest point to circle, which should work fine. And we'll just return a line dot length or circle 
to box dot length squared is less than or equal to circle dot get radius times circle dot get radius because uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but once we do have the closest point to the box, we just check and see if it's less than the radius, just like we did with the circle versus circle collision detection. And it works the same way. We just square it once again to make sure we're not taking that square root. Okay, now we're going to do public static boolean circle and box 2D. And this will take in a circle. And this will take in a box 2D, which is a box. So for this one, we are going to treat the box just like an AABB after we rotate the stuff. And the stuff in this case is the vector from the center of the box to the center of the circle. So let's say vector 2f min equals new vector 2f. Remember, we're treating the minimum as if it's at 0, 0. And we'll say vector 2f max equals new vector 2f box.get half size dot multiply by two. So we get the half size, we multiply by two because if the minimum is at zero, zero, then the maximum is just gonna be at the half size times two if this was an axis aligned box, which we're treating it like, remember? And then we'll say create a circle in boxes local space. And how do we do that? We just create that vector I talked about and rotate it according to the box. So it'll say vector 2f, r equals a new vector 2f this is the new this is that vector from the center of the box to the center of the circle and we'll say this is the circle dot get center dot sub the box dot get rigid body dot get position which is the center and i might change that i keep saying this i'm probably gonna change that because i don't like the way that's working currently then we'll say jmath dot rotate and we're gonna rotate our vector r according to negative box dot get rigid body dot get rotation around the vector box dot get half size because we want to rotate around the center of the box now i haven't actually tested this so we'll have to test this later and make sure that this is working properly okay uh, next we're going to say vector 2f local circle pose equals new vector 2f r dot add box dot get half size and so this is the last step in the process where we're basically saying, okay, now we want to get the local circle position. And to do that, we would just re-add the half size to the circle's position since we sort of subtracted it out right here. And that will get us back to the appropriate circle's radius where it would be if we were in axis aligned space. Then I'm literally just going to copy this right here, paste it down here. And you could probably make this a separate function so that we didn't have to copy paste this, but hey, it works and it works good. Instead of doing circle.getCenter, we're just gonna say it's actually the local circle pose and that's what we will replace for circle.getCenter everywhere because that is our new center. <laughs> so then down here, we'll replace this with local circle pose once again. Yeah, and that should be good. Okay, so that's it for checking if a circle in a box 2D are colliding. Um, in the next episode, for the game engine series, what I'm going to be doing is going over some more debug drawing techniques. That way we can start to debug draw circles and boxes. That way we can actually check and see if this stuff is working, right? Because if we can debug draw a circle in a box, then we can draw it as green when they're not colliding and red when they are colliding. And then that will tell us whether this is actually telling the truth, whether it's working. You can, of course, write unit tests too and work out some tests by hand. That will also work. That is it for this tutorial, though. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode in which uh, we will be doing, like I said, debug drawing in our game engine. And then in the next episode in the physics engine, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing box versus primitives. So how to check if a box is intersecting with another box or a box is intersecting with a rotating box. Actually, I should clarify access align boxes versus primitives. Okay. I'll see you guys then. Thanks. Thanks.